Boston Court Pasadena invites you to the immersive world premiere of Measure Still for Measure. Embark on a roaming journey behind the curtain to experience the complexities of creating theater. Happening now through October 15th. Visit bostoncourtpasadena.org for tickets. An unexpected bond. An unspeakable request. An unforgettable story. The Leftovers' Amy Brenneman stars in The Sound Inside, Adam Rapp's haunting drama that The New York Times calls astonishing. For 90 minutes, you are dying to know what will happen. Performances begin September 6th. Get your tickets now at PasadenaPlayhouse.org. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report. Los Angeles launches a new rent relief program for tenants who fell behind early in the pandemic. Thousands of California nursing home patients have serious mental illnesses. Experts call it warehousing. The consequences have been deadly. And a beach in South Orange County gets a much needed infusion of sand. We couldn't have planned it any better. Good morning, it's Wednesday, September 20th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the LA Report from LAist 89.3. Striking writers and Hollywood studios are scheduled to return to the bargaining table today. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers says the Guild had reached out, asking for a meeting to move negotiations forward. No word on any similar contact between the Alliance and the Screen Actors Guild, which continues its strike. The City of Los Angeles has launched a new rent relief program aimed at helping low-income tenants with unpaid rent from early in the pandemic. LA's housing reporter David Wagner has the story. The city is putting about $18 million toward the new program. The money is a fraction of the revenue so far from the so-called mansion tax approved by voters last November. If tenants qualify, the city will pay their landlords up to six months of past due rent. It is a positive step. Pamela Augustine Anguiano is with the tenant advocacy group Eastside Leads. I hope that we can get more money. The city's deadline to pay back early pandemic debts passed last month. Since then, some renters are already facing eviction. Fred Sutton with the California Apartment Association, a landlord group, supports the program, but he says the money doesn't go far enough. Frankly, this is just a small sliver of the funding that is potentially available. Renters can apply online, by phone, or in person between now and October 2nd. For LAS 89.3, I'm David Wagner. A prosecutor has filed a lawsuit against the city of Sacramento, alleging that it has failed to clean up homeless encampments. The plaintiff is the Sacramento district attorney, who says his office months ago asked the city to enforce laws around sidewalk obstruction and to create additional professionally operated camping sites. A group of residents and business owners has also filed a companion lawsuit against Sacramento. A new LAist investigation finds that tens of thousands of people with serious mental illnesses are ending up in California's nursing homes. But as LAist reporter LEU explains, the state does not have a full accounting of the problem. Our analysis of federal data shows that one in four nursing home residents in California had a serious mental illness last year, defined as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or psychotic disorder. But we found the state agencies that oversee nursing homes and mental health don't have a full picture of how many people with serious mental illness are in those facilities. In a joint statement, the agencies say they review individual patient data, but, quote, do not routinely perform data analytics for the express purpose of counting or tracking. You can read the LAist investigative report online at LAist.com. It's Climate Wednesday here at LAist, and it comes as hundreds of bills await Governor Gavin Newsom's signature or veto. Climate emergency reporter Aaron Stone tells you about some of the biggest climate bills that passed this year that include holding corporations accountable for their pollution. SB 253 requires companies that do business in California and make over a billion dollars in annual revenue, that's a billion with a B, to disclose their greenhouse gas emissions. And SB 261 requires any company that does business in California and makes more than $500 million yearly to report to the state its climate-related financial risk, as well as how the company will reduce or adapt to that risk. Aaron says if the bills are signed into law, 7,000 major companies would be affected and the data would be made public. To learn about other climate legislation that was advanced to the governor, go online to LAist.com. 
The company that bottles Arrowhead Mountain Spring water has been ordered to cut back the water that it draws from natural springs in the San Bernardino National Forest. More on that from LA's host, Nick Roman. Since 1906, Arrowhead Mountain Spring water has been just that, water from a natural spring in the mountains just above San Bernardino. For years, though, environmentalists complained that Connecticut-based Blue Triton, which owns the Arrowhead brand now, didn't have the permits to take that water, nor did the various companies that used to own Arrowhead. Well, the State Water Resources Control Board now agrees, so it's ordered Blue Triton to cut way back on what it draws from that natural spring. Blue Triton isn't giving up. It says it's drawing water from underground, water that the Water Resources Control Board doesn't control. It plans to sue to keep drawing that spring water. For LAS 89.3, I'm Nick Roman. South Orange County has a new-ish beach. That's thanks in part to last winter's epic precipitation and an unusually smooth collaboration among local and coastal authorities. LAist Orange County reporter Jill Rep Local explains. Pounding waves and not much incoming sediment had left the southern end of Doheny State Beach with not much beach and therefore not much protection for a coastline that is rapidly eroding. But recently, this stretch got an influx of sand, five Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of it. The sand came from near the mouth of the Santa Ana River brought by the heavy winter rains. It had to be removed, and that's when Susan Bradour at OC Parks and her colleagues at Doheny got a call. Hey, we got this sand available. Do you guys want it? They said, yeah. Beach nourishment projects like these can be super expensive and take years to plan. But in this case, the county was essentially offering to bring the sand over for free. We couldn't have planned it any better. An influx of sand is scheduled to come to neighboring San Clemente later this fall. For LAist 89.3, I'm Jill Replogle. Coming up, a philanthropic group sets up a library in a Los Angeles jail to help fathers connect with their kids. Boston Court Pasadena wraps its 20th anniversary season with the world premiere of Measure Still for Measure, written and directed by co-founding artistic director Jessica Kubzanski. This play within a play takes you on an immersive roaming journey behind the curtain to experience the layered and intimate complexities of creating theater. Happening now through October 15th. For tickets and more information, visit bostoncourtpasadena.org. Sometimes all the intrigue around Britney Spears' personal life obscures the fact that she's one of the most innovative and signature pop stars of her generation. I'm DJ Louis XIV, host of the podcast Pop Pantheon, and I'm partnering with LAist for a live taping of my show, where we'll get into Britney's forthcoming memoir, as well as what makes her such an indelible pop figure, with a panel of mega fans and scholars. And stick around for a special Britney-themed dance party after the show. It's on November 2nd at the Crawford in Pasadena. Tickets at LAist.com slash events. Back now to the L.A. report. Two USC student journalists will not face charges for taking football jerseys after covering the NFL draft in April. They were arrested and later told that the person who gave them the three jerseys did not have the authority to do so. Now, prosecutors in Missouri have cleared Eric Lamkins and Jude Okanyas of felony charges of stealing, burglary, and trespassing. In exchange, the two students will produce a video offering advice to journalists covering sports. Lamkins says the agreement is fair. This is the only plausible way that I think I could turn such a traumatic event into into a net positive. USC officials say the two ended up in a bad situation and the arrests were at worst a big misunderstanding. In downtown Los Angeles, Men's Central Jail has opened its first children's library. People who were incarcerated can now read along with their kids during visiting hours. Gordon Philanthropies created the library with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Dan Gordon leads the nonprofit. Hopefully it makes a difference in the lives of both the father and the children. If it can help develop literacy skills, then that's just an even added benefit. The Children's Library carries over 500 books spanning reading levels from TK to middle school, as well as board games and phonics flashcards. It's cooler today, low clouds and fog with some drizzle this morning, mostly cloudy skies for this afternoon. High temperatures will be in the low to mid-70s from the beaches through the L.A. basin into the coastal valleys. In the Antelope Valley, mid-70s to mid-80s. Thank you for listening to the L.A. Report. You can read more news at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM.
The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Out of the Shadows is a podcast on America's immigration system told through the eyes of our Latino community. I didn't understand how difficult life was going to be being an undocumented person. I mean, I became undocumented at the age of 14. I'm Patty Rodriguez. And I'm Eric Galindo. Follow us as we tell the incredible true story of a group of young people who took on the system and changed the course of history. Listen to Out of the Shadows Dreamers on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.